Hi guys, how are you? Um, I'm Mune from Genetic Superior Wheels in uh, South Africa. Um, I've been reading ball partners about for seven years. We used to, I used to breed under the name uh, Vimo ball pythons, and uh, about last year we decided to disassemble our um, you know, hobby slash business. Um, but this year we decided. The thing is, of ball pythons, when you stop, um, if it's in your blood, you can't, you can't uh, get rid of it. You know, yeah, it's always in in you. So. Um, I decided to keep a few old packs at the very latest of last year, the last few clutches, to keep some animals back that I'm raising. So basically starting afresh. Um, I obtained some few breeders from some of my friends and and uh, or start buying in again from uh, the guys who supported me. Well, I used to breed a lot more than this. I used to breed, I'm not a big breed, I mean, I breed like 20 clutches a year normally. But um, this year, because I sold out, um, you know, I sold off my collection. I only made, I think I'm going to have like six clutches. So, um, yeah, uh, today, and I started late. Um, I only started breeding in like July or August, actually. So, and it's late for South Africa. Um, but anyways, um, we had our first clutch, uh, but it was a surprise clutch for us. But um, this is a clutch. I've got another clutch in, the, in, in the, on the eggs here, and I'm going to take it off, and I'm going to try to help you guys um, show you the way I do things, um, the way I take the eggs and incubate them, and how I breed, and just want to you know, help you guys out, because... Always get messages, how do I incubate eggs, how do I set up the mimic light, and everything, so if I can uh, keep it in file, then I can just forward the links to everybody. So if you haven't liked our page, or follow us, um, please follow and share. Um, the clutch we're going to pull today, it's a special female. Um, we obtained this female as a baby from John at King Morphs, about 4-5 or five years ago, I can't remember. Um, we raised it. It was a slow grower. Um, she only, only ate multis. Um, so she took a while to grow. But she's at 4 or 5 years age. She's probably about 1.4 or 5 kilos after, before she laid the eggs. So let's see what she produces. So um, bear in mind with this video, I'm, I'm alone. I'm handling the camera myself, doing everything myself. So you'll see the, the clips like flow into each other let's try my first time we'll hopefully improve improve later on okay guys um checking out okay guys so here's a special female uh she had a prelay on the 18th of the, uh, october let's see what she has for us There she is. Looks like a healthy clutch is a little aggressive. Um, let me just take the tub out so I can walk over. Okay guys, so here she is. Um, I'm gonna try to remove her by the one hand. She's wanting to bite me. So let's see how I do this. Take her from the back of the head. There she's calmed down. Normally what I do is I take her from the tail over back and over she's empty so I'll put her back in the tub now there is two four six like eggs so let's let's see okay guys this is my I set up my vehicle light I got the stuff maybe at like this back or any other plastic place um, what I do is I put the tub on a scale I zero the scale and then I put in the mucolite um, the, the amount of mucolite depends on the tub size um, I use different sub tubs if I have a big clutch I have a, uh, a big 
stub and if I have a small always a smaller one but this is my average stub um, I'm gonna see if I can get it up to 400 grams um, uh, I'll take off you know, the four or five gram doesn't really matter so that's fine that's about four grams if I make it flush that's about the right depthness for me so what I do is I fill it up to weight with like to 800 grams because the mixture is one to one let's put the water all over 800 Eight or nine, that's fine. Four, four, it's more or less right. So what now? What I do now is I mix them and make light well with the water. We'll see. Just give me a second. You can use um, water, uh, temperature controlled water or cold water. Or any the the temperature doesn't really effect um, can be cold water or normal water this is now a bit colder water because it's been raining the day so anyway I make it flash like this and uh, that's my mixture right there so if you pick it up it does like clump so that's basically perfect so let me get to the eggs and I'll pack this eggs now okay guys so what I'm doing now is I don't use a grid um, the reason I use, um, I take dry vermiculite and I'll sprinkle it on all over the, I already did it, um, all over the, the mixed vermiculite, okay. So what, what I do there is I candle eggs, um, it's just difficult doing it with, with one hand now, I've got the phone in the other. So basically if I take the egg and I um, lay it down, I make a, like an indentation of the egg all right and i'll fill it up with dry milk like this acts as a um, grid so that's why i used to have grids but this is better um i have to give credit to it uh, where i learned this uh wally from bpm there was a year that i took got looked off these clutches i pulled it away I put when he was on holiday and that's how he did it and it works 100 percent so um let me get all the eggs candled and then um i'll show the clutch later okay guys it's very difficult for me i've got the phone like on my leg <laughs> yeah it sounds like a little moose as a professional but yeah let me just try to do what i explain here's the one first egg i took what you do is, um, you'll see there's veins there. Now there's an air bubble or vein. The veins must be on top. If you look at the bottom, if I show, see there's a yellow part. See there's almost no veins there. So on top here, yeah, there's a point. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it with that touch light. There's the embryo there. So the veins and the embryo must be always up, laying to the up. So this one is now right there. Um, I have life is good. I put him there in the space I created. Um, I'm not going to do all of them now. I'm going to. Do, it's very difficult for me, but let me do all of them. I just wanted to show you the eye life is on top. So I got my daughter's phone here. All right, so I'm back now. Got the thing on the table here. So those three eggs I didn't pull apart because. They're clumping to each other. I can take them if I want, but it's not necessary. Because I did candle the eggs and all the embryos are laying to the top. So they are fine like this. They will hatch like this. If one of them were like turn it upside down, I would have taken this apart. So they're all candled, they're all settled. What I'll do now is because these stubs they don't secure well, I put a um um, plastic sheeting on top that I will add now and then I'll put the top on um, but yeah the eggs are fine and um, let me just finish the wrapping and I'll come back to you now okay guys yeah I put the cling wrap on I'll secure the lid 
um, everything is good in there but there's also uh, always an other issue they say eggs need air to breathe and all that um, I've tried the method of putting two air holes in uh, you can see I, I have air holes in I'll just make a small hole on either side um, I tried about two years ago I did a um, fire Yerraberry Desert Ghost to hit this Ghost Clutch and went up and then there was no air and then today when I took out the clutch, the, cut the clutch they were all dead they were, all, they were developed, they were colored up it was a maybe a 5 out of 6 uh, visual clutch there I lost all those eggs and I believe it was through the air so what I, I decided to do is, is I do make two air holes um, then at the start of incubation I just sellotape the, the one side closed so there's a small amount I mean you can see that that's like really small just so there is some air going about and then when I see the eggs about on day 45 or 50 around about there I will take the tape off on, on, on that side so there's a little more air, air flowing and certain stuff done that um, I didn't see my eggs mold I didn't see my eggs go off and they all made it so that's what works for me um, okay so let's just do this clutch um, I still got five more clutches to go where everybody else basically already hatching the eggs this is a this year I only paid for basically old packs I didn't pay just for to make sales or anything but obviously I will sell some of the stuff um, that's extra because I want to keep my collection small I've got about like 50 snakes now that's including old pack hatchlings and breeder so there's not so much so this breeding was the the male was a OD clown um, I got this clown from DJ he was posted by it last shot proving proved him head by so he's a head by it um, male good male for us to the special now the I wanted to do this pairing because I'm looking for either a special head clown posset bite so with a ringer so but in, in essence it will be a special or an orange dream special head clown head bite double head um, so we'll hope for the odds I'm pretty sure there will be one at least a special in here so it will be a good building block for us to pull a collection forward I like snakes that look nice stay nice and with a uh, stay nice of color when they age and I speak the special is one of the genes there is some other genes that I'm working with that also um, makes the um, makes it look good oh, uh, something I forgot on this thing the date mm. it is the 21th of November November so that's 11 so that's the 21th or 11th and 2001 so this age will probably be out in January only so I've got a long week a long way to go and I still got other eggs, eggs now I still got a, I got a snake that overlaid yesterday and I even think there is some snakes that will overlaid only like in a month or two so I'll have babies well into <laughs> March April Okay, let this let me put this thing in the incubator. Okay, guys, here's our incubator. You will see it's running at 31.5. It is empty. <laughs> so yeah, basically, yeah, just because I breed late, I find I, I found that if you breed earlier, like February, March, like most of the guys did. Uh, the eggs already out but like I said I did it I did a late season I wasn't supposed to breed but uh, I just couldn't <laughs> do this season without um, doing it it's in your blood it's in your blood um, this gene what this incubator we got it from scrap at a 
farm here in outside Pretoria. It looked terrible. We fixed it up. Gene did the uh, Gene from Worth Morphs did the uh, um, wiring and the thermostat and everything. We've got some stickers here from guys for supporting me. I supported me and gave me stickers. Uh, Rogue Reptiles, um, MG, MG Ball Pythons in London, Brian from Plush Pythons, Dane from DG Royals, DG Reptile, Lachteria from Reptile for Centuries, Gene from Word Morphs, Johan from Desired Morphs, and I've got some off market stickers here. So, this is the guys who um, supports me. There's some guys, a lot of other guys support me, but this is guys who have stickers that they gave it to me uh, to put on the, on the incubator. So I'll fill it up as I go. So this kind of looks cool. So uh, it's just something I thought I'd show. All right, guys. Um, let me just maybe switch the camera. Oh, wow. Uh. Okay, so <laughs> it's a very amateur, I would say, video I took. But I was alone single-handedly um, the kids and wife are sleeping I don't want to bother them it's Sunday I don't want to wake them up and I'm excited to get the eggs in the incubator so okay I'm really really looking forward to the journey onwards um, I'm still I am increasing uh, racks I'm looking out for racks uh, racks in tub setups I like these grey ones I'll just um, there's some guys that make bigger that's what those ones I got from DJ. It's for my hatchling racks. Um, I want to get the uh, larger ones. There's some guys in South Africa that makes them. Similar to the Freedom Real ones. I'll invest in a couple of those racks. And um, and just keep on making my old, old packs and buy stuff in and, and see how it takes. Okay, but I'm back. I'm happy to be back in the game. Um, I'll have a small collection. It will take a long time, but um to make nice stuff but it doesn't matter it is part of the game it's it's part of me it's um once you start if it's in your blood it's in your blood um i really love the game even if there were no value monetary value in ball pythons i'll still do it um it's exciting for me working with the genetics when you get to cut the eggs when the babies hatch you you, you get what you aimed for and you get your ups and downs, 100%. Sometimes you don't get your, the things that you want. And sometimes on a head to head, you eat something insane. You don't even know what it is. So that part of ball pythons makes it um, kind of addictive, I would say. You know, the, the, the rush of breeding ball pythons, it's, uh, it's something you can't compare. And people who, won't, who don't breed ball pythons won't understand that. So, so all my fellow ball python beaters in South Africa, and even the guys overseas, if they are watching, my name is Monet from GSR. I hope to see you again. I'll make a video later again. I'm not going to do a clutch pulling video again because I did it now. Um, I'll only maybe maybe do a whole pack video or something, and then I'll do it one when I cut the clutches. Okay, 100%. Thank you guys.